If you are new to our channel and would like to follow our sailing adventures every week, click on the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss an episode. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up before you leave. Okay guys, so we have huge news. And that news is that we are finally going to get you guys to come on board Zephyr to spend some time with us cruising around. So what does that mean guys? Well, this is for all of you out there that are thinking about becoming a cruiser sailor. For those of you that might be thinking about investing and want to do like a try before you buy a cruiser experience to see whether the life is for you before you go out and put down that money on a boat. Or simply for those of you whose curiosity has got the best of them and want to just experience the cruising lifestyle as a salty sailor. That's right guys, so this is the chance for you guys to get an honest experience of what it's like to be a liveaboard. You guys will have the opportunity to live on this boat and get fully immersed in the actual cruising lifestyle. So that means sailing, living and socializing as a cruiser. With that, of course, comes snorkeling, spear fishing, uh, sunset drinks, beaches, coral reefs, everything that this lifestyle has to offer. So your time on board Zephyr will not be like a charter or an RYA course. What we're offering is a bespoke experience created just for you based on what you want to learn and what you want to see so that we can help you take those all important steps to making your dream a reality. So guys, what is the experience on Zephyr going to be like? Here we go. Let's dive right into it. <laughs> Alright guys, so if all of that sounds like something for you, make sure you head on over to the website at sailingzephyr.com, check it out, we're doing this for two months only, we've got six one week sessions available, come hang out with us, have a great time, we'll see you later. We'll see you when you see you, or we'll see you another day. <laughs> we're going to pull up the hook now though, we're going to leave Bastimentos Island behind and head to Starfish Beach, which we were already on. And that's where we did the cool sub winging and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to go back there to do a bit of work, actually. Work on the videos. Um, do a whole ton of work before we head to Canada. Before we head to Canada. Because we really want to take... Canada as um, a time to spend with family and a really good Christmas. So we've got a lot of stuff to do, cleaning the boat, all that. Um, so I think we're just going to do that there. It's a great spot. We can make water because it's beautiful water. So I think that's where we're headed to. Okay. Let's pull up the hook. James is finally doing the hard work around here. Uh, you hear Nat in the background. She says I'm finally doing the hard work around here. But we are going to pull up the hook. So. I'm gonna do the anchor, and Nat's gonna do the driving. Today, I get it easy. I get it easy. I just gotta drive the boat. Hopefully we don't hit the bottom somewhere. 
and the charts are all wrong, both of them. So we'll see how we go. Thankfully we went paddle boarding, so we got to see more or less where the really shallow areas are. So I know not to go that way, I think I just have to make it out that way, fingers crossed. We've ever had. I don't know how it's happened. We had plenty of tension on the chain. It came up and just this link backed up on this one. Yeah. I guess it's the worst one we've ever had. Yeah. All right. Just a jam. Definitely feels like you're right that there's some plastic missing on the this yeah. thing should be hollow. This is my serious face because these two don't match up at all. So you kind of have to take a happy medium navigating through all these uh, sandy patches. And it's already pretty shallow near obviously the sandy patches it goes down to nine feet. So yeah, I really don't want to get into those. Instead of just being able to take a straight line, we've kind of just had to like zigzag <laughs> around. And it's not the best day to do this because we can't see anything because the sun isn't kind of clouded today. When the sun's out, you can obviously see it at the bottom a lot, lot better. So, yeah. We make our way to Starfish Beach, where as soon as we arrive, there is a massive downpour. All right, guys, one of the things we do when it's raining like this is we'll fill the water tanks. Um, water is like king on this boat. And look at my little contraption, the back tank is full. Look at this. The back tank's full, man. We put about 50 liters of water in, in a space of about 10 minutes here with rain. The water comes down the railing. I just set up like a shirt or my boardies with some dive weights and it collects all the water and it just filters into the tank. And that's it. And our front tank was empty and Nats just told me we got a quarter in there now. So... I don't think it's the end of the rain. I think that's just the end of that squall. But if you check it out, let's check out the front contraption. So I got my other boardies here. The water comes down the railing and just goes in there. Starfish Beach on a really rainy day. <laughs> oh, the water is so warm compared to the rain at the moment. It's amazing. All right, well, I'm going to clean up, go inside. I think we'll have a nice hot drink of some sort. All right, guys, talk to you later. Just grabbing our bags to go to Canada. This is where we hide the stuff we 
never use because you got to rip the whole V berth apart. So, so in here, that's actually the relay for the windlass, believe it or not. We've got a ladder for a dinghy we don't have anymore. We have all these dry bags. Oh, a bunch of straps, child harnesses from the previous owner. I got a laptop bag. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good for. Okay. Yeah. What's this? Um, this is a bag full of some parts from something. It's an That's old. The old alternator no, no. This is uh, the old starter. Is oh. in here. They changed uh, the previous owner changed the starter motor. That's the old one as a backup. What else do we got? Ah, <laughs> the most important thing: a spare toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is the bag. This is our retro '80s dive <laughs> bag we found in an in an op shop. I love it. And yeah. Matt loves it. It's the Fusion Systems bag. And we're uh, gonna take this one to Canada. Yeah, and I think inside we have more bags. Uh-oh. Do they work? Yeah. Might Just have a to little, throw little... some WD-40. Don't break it. No, no. There we go. One of them. It's not as big as I remember it. Don't you think? I thought it was like huge. And now it looks tiny. I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty decent size. Yeah. I'd say this is probably like... We're just picking up a lot of parts when we're there. Oh my god. So, it's not so much going. Going is easy. It's the coming back. Yeah, that we've got to think about what bags to bring everything back in. That's a really good point. I think we'll probably even end up having to buy an extra bag, possibly. Probably. If, if, uh, if That's we... why I think we should take that one, and then two more bags inside. Lancashire. What else is in the treasure box? The treasure box, most importantly, just in case, we have a little roach trap. Yeah. Any in there? Nope. There's no roaches in here. And that's it. If we were going to have a bow thruster, this is, I think, where it would go in here. Okay. So. Perfect. Well, I'm going to get packing. All right, guys, I am going to show you something that is a constant problem on sailboats when you are shopping in supermarkets from all over the world. Uh, we never really had this problem in Europe, but I tell you what, being in Central America, this problem has been fierce. All right, so I was just checking the bilges, doing my little checks as I normally do, and to get to one of the accesses in the bilge, I got to kind of go through one of our little uh, food storage areas. And whenever I do that, I always like to just do a little check of things. And one of the biggest problems we have to deal on sailboats is infestation of bugs in your pastas, rice. Um, they even get trapped in labels and cardboard and things like that. So we're usually extremely careful on Zephyr. Whenever we have any packaging, we remove it all outside in the cockpit and you know take it to the trash. Yeah, so we try our best to minimize infestation of food on board. Rice and pasta are notoriously the worst. Um, often you'll buy this and it'll have eggs in it from the factories. Rice and pasta, so far in Central America, has been like Russian roulette. And I was just cleaning out going through one of our food stores and this is like the fifth bag of pasta I'm having to basically throw out. I thought one dropped on my foot there. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, check out how many come out of the bag when I pour it in the water. The last bag had like over 200 in it. And we've only had this pasta for maybe a couple weeks. So imagine if it was sat there for months. Anyways, just another day living on a sailboat. What an experience, hey? All right, guys, we'll check you later. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! <laughs> <laughs>